Japan, the climate question. The world loves coffee. We drink two billion cups each day, but it's very valuable to climate change, and millions of coffee farmers are struggling. We taste a new variety that could be a game changer for coffee in the rolling world. This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Hello and welcome to News Day on the BBC World Service with James Cotton and Davina Gupta. Great to have you with us. Today, more than 400 arrests in France as anger grows over the police killing of a 17-year-old boy at a traffic school. We are absolutely disgusted by what just happened with Nael. He didn't deserve this at all. It's absolutely disgusting. This happened. We will hear from one of the main police unions in France. The US Supreme Court rules against affirmative action in universities. That's going to have a huge impact. We'll speak to a leading law professor. We'd also hear about a major U.S. Supreme Court decision ending affirmative action in universities across America as we get more reactions. And the AI glass that's able to pick out a tune on a piano. That's after the latest work. Hello, I'm David Harper with the BBC News. More than 400 people have been arrested across France as violence sparked by the police killing of a teenager continued for a third night. Unrest has spread to the centre of the capital, Paris, and several other major cities. Some of the worst has been in Montaigne, where Nahel, a 17-year-old of Algerian descent, was shot dead on Tuesday. Regine Vajinath reports from Paris. Clashes continued in the Paris suburb, where a teenager was killed by police this week. Earlier on Thursday, thousands gathered for a march. Nail's mother left the crowd. The officer charged over her son's death has now apologised. But for many, that won't be enough to quell the unrest. These protests have reignited anger and resentment over police violence, particularly towards minorities. Negotiators from the International Monetary Fund have agreed a $3 billion bailout loan for Pakistan to help alleviate its economic crisis. The move, following lengthy talks, lowers the risk of a sovereign debt default. With more detail, here's Ambrose and Esiraja. The decision by the global lender to disperse the amount means it is satisfied with the measures taken by the government to reduce its fiscal deficit and boost revenue. This would allow Islamabad to reach out to other international lenders to get additional funds to revive the economy. Pakistan had to sharply hike taxes, energy prices and interest rates. Without the IMF loan, there were fears that the country could default on its debt repayment. Experts say though the IMF loan offers a respite, the country also needs to have political stability to attract foreign investment. The head of the UN Children's Agency has said the situation in Haiti is worse than ever, urging the world not to abandon civilians caught in gang violence in Gulf of the country. Catherine Russell said gangs now control 60% of the capital, Port-au-Prince, and many other areas. Bill Grant reports. The world is failing the Haitian people, said Catherine Russell after her visit to the Caribbean nation. It's hard to imagine a decent future for the country, she said, calling the current security situation unacceptable. Haiti has been caught in the grip of an ongoing and brutal conflict between the country's powerful street gangs and the police. In particular, she drew attention to several horrific acts of rape and gender-based violence against women and girls, which she said had reached staggering levels and was a constant threat against some of the most vulnerable people in the country. The BBC investigation has found that the Wagner Mercenary Group is still recruiting fighters across Russia days after staging a mutiny against the country's military leadership. BBC journalists contacted more than a dozen Wagner recruitment centres and were told it was business as usual. You're listening to the latest world news from the BBC.